glad you're here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful fall day, this 21st Sunday after Pentecost, our food grain service. Welcome to folks from Brussels United. Welcome to folks from Live United. Welcome folks who are connected by food grains today. You are welcome here. You are always welcome here. How wonderful it is to worship together. Friends, as we gather to worship, we acknowledge that the land upon which our communities serve and worship is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe Nation. On land covered by Treaty Number 29, also known as the Huron Tract Purchase of 1827. We give thanks for the opportunity to live and serve on this land with all its peoples. We acknowledge where relations have gone awry, and we continue to apologize and live out that apology in listening and in action, both as church and as individuals. And as we prepare ourselves for worship, we take a moment to uplift that identity which brings all of us here together today, that identity of being siblings in in that spirit, we light our Christ again. We celebrate God in our midst as loving parent, devoted son, and imminent spirit, a relationship ever sure and ever new. And we light our other candles as candles of care, remembering those in our families, in our congregations, in our communities, and around the world that are especially on our hearts at this time. And friends, the peace of Christ be with you all. And also, and also with you. Take a moment, give a wave, give a peace sign, however you want to greet one another in worship today. There's a few more than usual, so make sure you get all the more. <laughs>
Good and gracious God, you are gathering this community from across Europe, asking us to pour out our lives on behalf of those who hunger, for hope, for justice, for daily bread. You are asking us to see the earth as you do, so very, very good. As a global community, as local congregations, gather us together so that we may remind each other of your intent to preserve. Gather us so that we may pour out our lives in Christ's name, as Christ does on behalf of those who honor. This, this we pray in Jesus' name. We'll go right into our scripture readings for today. And our scripture readings talk about the abundance that we find in God, the zeal for justice that we find in God, and our urge to see God in our lives, in the lives of others. Our first scripture reading for today comes from Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians. This is probably one of my favorite letters uh, that we have in scripture today. Both the Thessalonian letters, they're very pastoral letters. They're letters of encouragement. They're letters of uh, seeing the possibilities to grow in faith and grow in life. And this opening passage from Second Thessalonians is, uh, is a perfect example of that. Paul, Savannah, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God for you, siblings, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of God's call and will remain by God's power every good resolve and work of faith, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you, and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Our psalm for today is another passage from Psalm 119. This is a psalm we've been uh, visiting a few times in the past couple of weeks, a very long psalm, where each part of the psalm speaks to a different aspect of our lives in God. And this part of Psalm 119 we sing of God's justice, of God seeking justice in our lives and in the ways that we uh, interact with one another. So you can follow along on the screen here or in Voices United, number 841. Glenda will play the refrain once, I'll sing it once, we'll all sing it together, and then go ahead with the reading. Our last scripture reading for today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19. 
This is a passage that most of us will be familiar with in some way, shape, or form. This is the story of Zacchaeus, the person who climbs the sycamore tree in order to see Jesus in the crowd at Jericho. Um, quick little side, this has basically nothing to do with the message today, but someone uh, brought it up with me, interestingly. Whenever we hear this passage, we always think of Zacchaeus as the short one, as the one who's so short that he has to climb the tree to be able to see. Um, and somebody said to me, it was just a few days ago, what if Jesus was the short one? <laughs> you never? Hey, okay. I've completely distracted you now, I apologize, but that's what I've been thinking on the past few days. Anyways, Jesus and Zacchaeus, what we should be listening for here today is listening about who is welcome at our tables, how we build longer tables in our lives, and how we seek God's presence in our lives. <clears throat> Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was quite rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd he could not because he was short in stature. So Zacchaeus ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to that place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down from there, for I must stay at your house today. So Zacchaeus hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw this began to grumble and said, He's gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We continue with our next hymn, Voices United 306, God of the Farmlands, to the tune of Voices United 75. So the tune should at least be familiar to you. We'll sing verses 1, 2, 5, and 6. So, you get to spend all of lunch trying to figure out where the connection is. 
but I welcome the Lord as I'm the speaker today. I'm going to shed the coat first because it's warm enough in here. <laughs> and then I'm going to have two guys in front of you. They did give me permission that if I get tongue tied, that they're going to finish it. <laughs> To begin with, uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, uh, I'm, in a way, I'm thankful Steve is sick because that gives me the opportunity to speak to you. Somebody's grief is always somebody else's pleasure. So, anyways, uh, actually, I just got back from Ottawa. We were down in Ottawa for uh, doing part of the food grains uh, uh, advocacy. To the Canadian government, uh, to the politicians, we we learn about more about the Canadian Food Grains Bank, and then actually we go into uh, split up into groups and we go and uh, advocate for the Canadian Food Grains Bank. Who uh, it turned out to be 24 different politicians, and you don't know how politics goes until you try to meet a politician because <laughs> it doesn't go as planned. But we've got a really good organizer, the Food Grains guy, uh, and Andrew was his name. He uh, was there. I would not want to be him. He's actually got hair. I don't know how. Because his week or three days that we were there was totally up and down. And politicians would show up and someone would. He'd be rebooking, scheduling, and he's a fantastic individual. But I understand you do definitely know somewhat about the Canadian Food Grains Bank. Right? So, I don't know. yes. Okay, first one. Where do we keep going? There we go. Uh, the mission work, the mission is working to end hunger, as everyone knows. And the vision is to end world without hunger. That's the vision. So, and, and this isn't done by one individual. It's not done by one group. Uh, Canadian Food Grains Bank is, a, is one, it's a fairly large one, of uh, Agency, let's call them, to uh, to end hunger. But the Canadian Food Grains Bank is rooted, as you know, in incarnations, because it believes in humanity and is created in the image of God, and that it's God's desire that no person shall go hungry. And if food available in the world, there is enough food in the world. The problem is getting the food distributed evenly among the world. Next, we go. Yes. Okay, and there's three sections to the Canadian Food Grains Bank. There's the emergency food aid, then you have the long term response, and then you have the engaging Canadians uh, to talk to the politicians and the government. And that's what we were doing last week. Uh, so, the first part, the emergency food aid assistance, is when there's a crisis. Um, and it can be anything from war to uh, climate change to uh, just shortage of cash, a poor crop. Uh, there's a number of things that can make that there's no food. I mean, uh, as farmers, we, we know if you don't get a poor crop, yes, we're beneficial. You, we got crop insurance and, and those stuff if you can partake in it. But if you have a crop, it's a crop failure, and you put all your crop in one basket with school, for example, wheat, and there was a storm before you got your wheat off, it would be a tough year because you got everything in one basket, you got everything going against you because the weather was not good, you put all your eggs in one basket, and things like that. So that's where the learning, the long-term uh, response comes in. It can go into uh, developing programs, it can go into uh, new technology, learning new technology and various aspects of food production. And, and like I said, so you learn not to put all your, you don't plant wheat. Every a farmer in Ontario here would not plant everything he's got in the wheat. Even if the price was good, you more likely would not do that. So that's part of it is it's uh, supporting, <coughs> excuse me, supporting improvement for nutritious uh, in the household teaching women how to, to cook proper, to uh, go through the, maybe a kitchen garden, so you've got your, your house, 
but then you got a little garden note back. And, and that makes uh, for a long-term response. Uh, it can be uh, how to save money, how to, how to uh, save the crop. Once you get your, your crop in and off the field, you got you got to serve it, right? So and it's how to do that, maybe how to put it in the right storages. It could be uh, <coughs> loans for uh, co-ops, it could be personal loans to get you going. And, uh, and these loans are not done through the government loans or the banks or something. This is a, it's a microfinancing, what they do call these loans. And uh, nutritious, nutritional training, and that can go as far as even checking your water. I mean, water's a big thing, you gotta drink water. But if you're drinking poor water, I mean, you, you've gotta drink it, but you can get it tested, maybe you can boil it and stuff like that to make it healthier and better. And sanitation is a big problem in, in third worlds too. And then the, the third part, like I said, is the, the MC, and that's where we would talk to the politicians. That's where you two come in. If you want to write letters, you can actually go on the Canadian Food Grains Bank website, and there's a section there that you can pull out the letter and you can take it and tweak it to what you want and send it to your local politician. In this case, it's going to be Ben Wall, which I was talking to Ben last week, uh, Friday night. And he, he knows who we are and he's very much aware of the Canadian So that would be a, an easy sell. But that letter from one individual holds a lot of weight when it comes to advocating for Canadian Food Grains Bank and for um, to spend some of your tax dollars on to end world hunger. Yes. <clears throat> In 2021, together we had we uh, provided over 20, 49 million dollars for assistance in. Uh, and assistance of over 989 million people in 33 countries. Uh, and that's gone up since COVID. That is a 2021 statistic. This is 2022. We know that statistic's gone up. Um, no one person can solve this problem. No one foundation, no one organization. So that's where, again, where we come in. Working together to accomplish the goal of the Canadian Food Grains Bank is to end hunger, which is a large network of uh, global affairs in Canada. We got members, uh, as you know, uh, 15, I mean, yes, 15 different church organizations support the Canadian Food Grains Bank, which works really, really good because then we don't, as Canadian Food Grains Bank, go into the country and distribute the food. We work with the agencies. If it's a United Church project in uh, Mozambique and Malawi, or if it's a Lutheran project, or uh, 15 of them, I mean, Salvation Army, the uh, Roman Catholic section, they're, they're big. Uh, Mennonite Central Relief Committee, huge. But we supply them, they apply to the Canadian Food Grains Bank for funding, and then they, they actually do the administration. In, the distribution in the different projects, or projects overseas. The growing project, I, I do believe these are connected with, you got a project in Y, or is it connected with another one? It's called the Bruce Field. Sorry? Bruce Field. Bruce Field, right. And uh, so you know the growing project, you know how it works. It's supported by the Edgar Marks, uh, and there's actually over 200 of these growing projects across Canada. I know us in Clifford, we uh, were unfortunate. We lost our few acres that we did have. Uh, it was sold out. I don't know the land. The land, we sold it. So we lost that. But we're still looking for land. We're still uh, thinking we are making a curling in Clifford. How many do close the range? But We've had curling bonds fields in Clifford for the Canadian Food Grains Bank. And uh, the curling doesn't raise a lot of money, but we have an auction sale during the curling. And when you can sell a ham for, what's a ham weigh? Eight to 10 pounds maybe, or shoulder? 
for $55 or $60, you're making pretty good money on that painting. So it's, uh, it's, it's a growing project. It's not necessarily growing on the ground um, project, but they're all supporting the Canadian community. There's over 1,500 Canadians support for uh, the emergency food crisis in 2021, uh, donating or for emergency appeals. So this is above and beyond the Canadian Food Bank Bank. <coughs> this is um, when Ukraine and Russia went to war. There was a, a call from the Canadian Food Grace Bank to go out and, and supply food aid in Ukraine and uh, they actually went on quite a few different times. There were, I think three special appeals went out this year for different uh, drug is, is and I'm going to say Africa, I'm not exactly sure if it's Ethiopia or exactly what countries, but uh, there, I believe it's three different emergency aids went out for I think it was 1,500 different Canadians who responded to that. There's over 240 Canadians sent letters. And uh, myself and one maybe somebody in this congregation sent a letter to their politicians uh, for greater support. And that goes a lot of way. I can't emphasize enough how much a letter from the Canadian government sent uh, holds. 1,431 Canadians participated on online events. And that's the, the event that I was at. Uh, they have online events that you can just learn about the Canadian Green Bank, how to write letters, how to advocate, how to start a growing project. Uh, there's, there's lots of education out there to work with that. The food security ones. There we go. Uh, when all people have regular access to enough nutritious food. So you don't just have to have food. It's nutritious food you've got to have enough. And it's to lead healthy and active lives. So there's there's a difference between having enough food and having nutritious food and having enough food. There's there's three aspects there. When I was I've been over to Africa twice, Ethiopia once, Mozambique, Malawi was the, my first trip. Uh, they've got a, a let's call it it's like a potato. The name stuck in my mind what it is, but it's it's like a potato. But it's, you can, they grow it quite good. It, it's even in a drought year, it'll grow to a fairly good size. And it, it's, it's kind of like, a, like I say, like a potato. So you have lots of food, they can grow their food. There's lots of food. The problem with this food, it doesn't taste very good. And it's got a nutritional value of carbon. So it, it, doesn't, it doesn't do anything for you other than fill you up. Once you're full, yes, then you feel like going to work a little bit. But you're actually just depleting your own body by eating it. But then, I mean, I'm not saying they're not eating it, they don't grow it. I'm saying it makes them feel full so they go out to tend their gardens and their parks. So that's the difference between having enough nutritious food. The availability of food is, it, there is enough food. Like I said before, there's enough food in the world. It's just how do you distribute it and get the access. And it, this can be uh, everything from, uh, uh, let's see what we got here. Individuals growing, and like I said, in the household, uh, wives can grow, or ladies have gardens. The ladies are actually a huge farmer in the third world. It's a lady that does a lot of the farming. Uh, they have household and communities with uh, sufficient geographical areas. So this, when you get food, you got, we don't, Canadian Food Great Bank, do not send food from Canada to the third world. We do not, we use it, yes, but that is no economics in that, it doesn't make sense. So what they do is they partner with individuals over there, the growing partners, the, the churches, the, um, the Lions Clubs, the uh, Rotary Clubs, anybody but the government. They, do not, they don't partner with governments, they partner with non-government non agencies. And uh, it's them, and they go purchase food within close, close proximity of the hunger or of the 
starvation or where of the growing project that they're working on. And there's, like I say, there's accessibility to it. They might have to transport it a couple hundred kilometers to get over there. A hundred kilometers is a long ways because the elevation changes so thick, so fast. Uh, the rains, as we know in Ontario, the rains can hit me a mile far away and may not hit them. So it's, it's, it's the timing of the rains and it's the utilization of the food that goes with it too. How to proper store it, the pros, uh, preparing it, uh, the distribution, the digestibility of the food. If you don't prepare it right, you can't digest it as well. Uh, and then the long term, that, uh, the food stability uh, for individuals and households to access, to access it and available at a timely fashion. You don't want all your food up front all at once. It's got to be stretched out because we do have a whole year. Why are we people hungry? Yes, we touched on this before. You got uh, inequality. You have uh, the conflicts, the wars. Uh, you got the climate change. We all know about climate change here, even in Canada. It doesn't affect us as much as it does over there. Uh, but climate change is here. It's a reality. It's not going to go away. Uh, and I'm saying that as a farmer, I know when I started farming, it was at 75, we were growing about at 25, 24, 2500 heat unit quarter. And if you got 100 bushels, you did well. That was a really good bumper crop. Now they're in the same farm, the sun, if he's not planting 3000 or 3100 heat unit quarter, he's not going to put it in the ground to begin with. And if he doesn't get close to 200 bushels, you better get 150 for sure. So there's a climate change, and it's all with the with the rains and that too. And the food system uh, barriers uh, and, and just hit us really. We noticed this because COVID brought on a food shortage even in Canada. You couldn't uh, you go to the shelves. Maybe we were very fortunate in the country here. We never I never seen too many shelves that were empty empty. There are some little stores that are getting mold, but it's uh, the food system to make sure it's transported right, to get out there, and if you get in third worlds, the transportation is very, very difficult to get this food out there right, and going through. <coughs> like I said before, and weather there, they got 79% of uh, in the least developing countries that are doing the incoming agriculture. And I'm not a big kick on figures. One more. Oh, okay. I'm full this part. I'm going to give you some figures. I'm not a big fan of figures because to me they go in and out. They change so quick. <coughs> but uh, there's 82.4 million worldwide uh, is forced into displacement in 2020. So I'm going to say, and. Uh, so that's a huge number. We know that number's still going up because of the different wars and the drugs. We know that number's still going up. This guy here that you see on the screen, <coughs> when I was in uh, Mozambique or Malawi, I'm not sure which country it is. Um, this is a Stephen Cherry. He's a Canadian, Canadian missionary over there, and uh, he's an agronomist at the same time. And he come over, I don't know if you can really see it there. This part here, to the left of him, is a solar uh, dryer. They, it basically, it's a frame, they put plastic on top, they put their fruit, their uh, fruit in it, and it, the apples, the onions, uh, tomatoes, peppers, they put in there, and then that's a way of preserving the food, because once it's dry, it can't rot or deteriorate anymore. And uh, he did a lot of workshops uh, to educate the farmers and women, and uh, his biggest hardest hardship was there's only one of him that he was running 24 seven. They wanted the information so bad, because like this lady next, please. <coughs> Like this lady, she uh, took this how to farm, how to uh, 
starts raising tillage. In those countries, what they do, it's not being a shortage of land, it's a shortage of good land. But they do a slash and burn. Well, you don't slash and burn when you want to grow something in the, on the ground because it ruins all the growing nutrition of the soil. But that's what they would do because there's massive, massive amounts of growth. So they do a slash and burn. But through conservation tillage, she learned that you cut it off and you bury it, and then it grows, and that's your green manure, as we know in Canada. That's how conservation tillage works. You don't, uh, you, you get as much growth as you can, and you put it down under the ground, and that's your, your nitrogen, your phosphorus, and that's, uh, that's, a, that's a fertilizer. Uh, but this lady, she, from harvesting 205 pumpkins, she provided 70 to her neighbors, and uh, had the same history, and the neighbors, I had the same history of asking neighbors for food as she, which she did, but then she took the course, but now they're learning off her. They come to her and she wants to make it, uh, help them out and go forward. So there's a lot of learning. Everything changes in her last year. And uh, because she went from asking for food to growing it up and given to her. <coughs> so, uh, and it, that project actually is a, is a Roman Catholic project where she was involved in the same pot. This next guy is an irrigation project, and I'm not sure where this one's from, but it, let's see. This is a, an Ethiopian one, so it's on. They, they, what they do is they dam the, the, the river up, um, because it does rain. It's not a case that doesn't rain. It's a case they don't know when it's going to rain. So you have a dam, you dam the river up, and then the irrigation goes out. They could go for a kilometer or two before they get to the flat land. And then it's just, it's not a drip irrigation, it's just a gravity flow irrigation system. And a lot of these projects are co op. Uh, half a dozen farmers coming together to make it, it, to make it work because it does cost them a fair bit to make all these irrigation and the dams and the canals to go forward. Here's a, a, this Ansun Yo, I think you would pronounce it as. She's, uh, same thing. They uh, taught her, they built a pond, or fish pond, and this is the Mennonite Central Relief Committee. Um, is the district support organization. In her district, it took, it went over five years, so it's not a go in, teach them, get out. It's a five year project, so you know it's working. You know and it's better to teach a person to fish than give them a fish. I mean, yes, you got to give them a aid. You got to give them a the fish. But if you can teach them how to fish and to grow the pond and how to feed their fish, it, it, uh, it, it's, it's an everlasting thing. This project it, uh, involved digging 76 fish ponds for a target household of, um, and is it here? I don't have a number of people. And this was in April 21, or 2021, this project was, including the training in sustaining agricultural practices, essential family nutrition, as well as agricultural inputs uh, was all supplied, and in addition to raising the fish, she also planted vegetables in the proper part of the pond to make, because the pond might you draw down, so you put your vegetables in there, and you're gonna have to do your irrigation. So like I say, we were over there, and uh, this is, again, when I was in Mozambique and Malawi, and, uh, this picture is about uh, us receiving food, or aid, thank you. This is about the thank you. Uh, we went into this, it was raining, it was pouring. The church was not even near the size of this church here. And, and it was just a dirt floor. We walked in and we had to, don't pick your feet up, you would have stepped on somebody. That's how grateful they are. 
and it was all inside raining, hot, very, very hot in that church. Uh, but they were so thankful that we were there as Canadian Grace Bank people giving to it. We actually did do a distribution that day. Um, and in the meantime, we went down, we got our, well, we got hats and chickens and a broom. And there was mats too. Oh, I'm hanging onto a mat. And uh, so you got little brooms, mats, and that is how they thank the Angel Grace Bank people for being who they are, the Canadian government, for being there, for giving them food aid. And that was an emergency food aid. Then we went down the hill. Next, please. This uh, baseline center. On the way down at the hill, we learned from our Dan Means was our supervisor. We learned the value of that chicken that we had received. We received one, two chickens. The chicken we learned on the way down the hill is the most highly praised thank you you can get. Naturally, because the chicken lays eggs and lays eggs and lays eggs, and then once it's all spent, then you can make soup out of the chicken. And the eggs, you can have some in your for more chickens, and so it's a revolving, revolving door. And it just, and, but the chicken is the highly most praised way of giving a thank you. And we received two of them. The baseline setting works when we were down there. They measure the height of the child, their forearm, they have, they, and his weight. So, yes, you get the height, the forearm, and the weight. And they, the age of the child, so that all goes in. And then when the food aid goes in, the distribution of the food, it could be four months, it could be six months long, because these are not, they say they don't go in, and this is emergency food aid. And you've got to do a baseline study before you can have an emergency food aid. The Canadian Food Aid Bank does not do the baseline studies. That's your large organizations, uh, world reliefs of the world do your baseline studies. And so we left there, and we went up this hill because they were having lunch up at the top of the hill. And a lady cut in front of us. There was three of us walking together. But this lady cut in front of us. When you should have attention, you don't. You don't so it's all. She got in front of us and she stopped. She handed me a chicken. And she said, Thank you. And we responded, Well, you're welcome. She says, No, you don't get it. You don't get it. She said, You saved my grandkids. My, my, my kids all died. Because of AIDS and hunger. Kids died. And she said, Canadian Food Aid Bank saved my grandkids. And she gave us this chicken. Like I said, it's hot. But if you want to wait needs, that's the toughest spot to be in. Because yes, and you don't give your chicken back because they just that's the appreciation. We took the chicken, we were living at a, a hostage place. We're staying a couple nights at hostels. We get the, the cook at the place. But that is one of the hardest things you do. Another one of the hard things you do, oh sorry, is we had food aid into a orphan camp. They had quite a stringent to get into the orphan camp. You had to be no grandparents, no parents. Uh, under six or seven, just just kids, 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 like young kids. And we did a maize corn uh, distribution to those. <coughs> and again, they're hot, they're very hot, humid. And again, that's one of the harder things you can ever do. In, well, I don't know, I've never been close to that. So, as Christians, this is where we're coming from. You give, you pray, you learn, and 
and you have to. You give by donating. You pray for the South Sudan and the Ethiopians, uh, Sahara is the uh, third world countries of the world. You advocate the Canadian government, your MP, through letters, through talking to them, through a phone call, through an email, ever how. And you'll learn as much as you can about the Canadian Food Grade Bank. Next goes to, because we are as called as Canadians and as Christians to go forward and end global hunger. And uh, on small scale farming, it's the easiest and best effective way to end global hunger. It's not to go through a corporation, it's not to go through governments. And climate change is a huge, huge part of the problem up there. The unrest and wars now. So it's, uh, it's our task. And uh, the latest figure we got down here in Ottawa is there is, I could be wrong on this, but it's very close. The world has got a budget of $23.5 billion to end world hunger. That's the world. There's eight countries in the world, eight richest, nine richest countries in the world. 23.3 years in that billions of dollars. Canada has a budget specified. It's already budgeted and set aside to go for global hunger and climate change. And this isn't all Canadian Food Green Bank, this is to all the agencies across Canada to help global hunger. Next, please. Oh, this is five years ago, 2018. I didn't realize this picture was in there. And now, uh, and that's when we were in Ottawa, 2018, maybe again with politicians. Um, and we just, that's what we got to do as Canadians. And who did I send my email? Did you? Who gets this email? Alex, you got it? Did, what did I say there about uh, when I end my email? To you? Uh, end hunger? And hunger, and I spelled it wrong. Did you notice that? Yes. I spelled end <laughs> hunger wrong. Next slide, I explained. There's the end hunger spelled wrong. Actually, in this picture, you can't see it, but the end hunger is the license plate of it. That's my personal <laughs> car. Uh, I drive it whenever I can. Right now, it should be in the body shop, or in the shop, not the body shop. But uh, it's got CFGB. In chrome across the front, and it's got a license plate that says "End Hunger." So that and you can't have eight letters on a license plate. That's because I well, I dropped one letter on "End Hunger." That's the explanation behind it. "End Hunger" is no more. So if you see the car on the road, it's more like me driving because my wife she doesn't she doesn't track it too often. Anyways, so thanks for being here. I, I really really appreciate it. Uh, the invitation. I hope you have a growing project that does quite well with you and uh, go forward. So, talk to your government. Thank you.
going to ask you to refer to your uh, bulletins in the, or the, the community <coughs> letters in your bulletins. It has all the upcoming service dates, all the information there. Uh, just a couple things to know coming up this week is that we have our uh, spiritual growth team meeting happening Friday afternoon on Zoom. So spiritual growth team members, look for the email with the link for that. Uh, next Sunday, we're back to our normal service times, live at 9.30, Brussels at 11 o'clock. Uh, the Bly service for next Sunday, we will be having members from the Bly Legion joining us for that service. So um, please make note of that. Any announcements or celebrations to be shared today? Here's one. Uh, we serve with all that we have. We serve with our advocacy efforts. We serve with our uh, own lives of discipleship and prayer. And we serve by giving all that we have. That includes our offering, which will now be received.
place of your way. We continue our prayers and words so lovingly taught by your risen Son, who exemplified the relationship with you, loving God, as a mother loves her child. We sing these words together as found in Voices United, number 960. Desire for justice and love and peace as it does you. 